What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to teach you how to use a material override to analyze the lighting in your model. Um, before we get started, today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, um, maybe you want to support what I'm doing here, you can check out that link in the notes down below. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I'm going to create a video that's a little more in depth on V-Ray lighting, the types of lights, that sort of thing a little bit later. So I'm going to get a lot more in depth on your different options and that sort of thing. But for today, for today's video though, I wasn't able to get that done, but I did want to give you a little tip for working in V-Ray. And so when you're working in V-Ray, one of the things you can do is you can use a material override to uh, really get a good look at your lighting in your model. And so what I want to do, first of all, model credit for this one is Coffee Shop 02. This model is from the placement building bundle so that's a bundle of models that you're gonna get if you purchase the placemaker extension and I'll link to some information about placemaker um, down below but so that's where this model came from but uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and we're gonna run an interactive render within V-Ray and so you're just gonna go over to the V-Ray for SketchUp toolbar and you're gonna click on render interactive and so what that's going to do is that's going to create a rendering of the interior of your model. So you can see this is a very simple kind of open model. I've got like a wood material applied on the flooring. And uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of different shadows and that sort of thing. We're kind of uh, illuminating the model using the built-in sun. And you can see how this will adjust as I click and drag in my shadows bar. These shadows will update because they're being driven by SketchUp's sun. So... But you can see how this takes a while to render. And part of the reason this takes a while to render is because it has um, different materials and that sort of thing in it. So what it's doing is it's coming in here and it's trying to calculate all of those different things. Well, initially, when we're just setting our light, we don't necessarily want it to calculate how the light's going to bounce off of the floors or off of the wood paneling or anything like that. We just want to see how the lighting's going to get into our model. And so the way that you can do that is you can apply a material override. And so to apply a material override, I'm going to start by, or I'm going to stop my interactive render, and I'm going to go into my V-Ray Asset Editor. And so if you remember, the V-Ray Asset Editor is where you edit everything from your materials to your lighting to your different settings. And so what we're going to do in this case, and you know what, I'll actually pull the interactive render back up. So we'll have this running as an interactive render. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the settings section. You're going to go down to the option for material override. And so when you do that, you're going to click this little button. And what that's going to do is that's going to apply a material to all of your different faces in your model. And you can see how in this case that actually didn't work very well because what that did is that applied this color to your exterior windows. So now in your interior, you can't actually see any light coming in. And so what we want to do is we want to go back in and we want to change a material setting. And so in this case, and so in this case, what we want to do is we want to go back to our materials editor and we want to find our glass material because we don't want our glass material overridden. Our glass material needs to stay glass so that light can get in so that we can light this scene. And so what, what you're going to do is you're going to go down and you're going to find your glass material for your exterior windows and then you're going to go over into the material settings. And if you can't see that, you can click on this little arrow to the right and that's going to give you a list of things that you can adjust. Well, in this case, you you want to scroll down to the material option section and you want to uncheck the box for can be overridden. So when you uncheck the box for can be overridden, what that's going to do is now we're applying a material override, but we've told V-Ray you can't override the glass material. So the glass material itself can't be overridden. And so now let's go back in and take another look at our render. So now you can see how our glass material is still there. So you can still see through that, but then all of these other materials have been overridden to that gray material that we selected in our settings. And you can adjust what color that is. So you can just kind of click and drag this um, to kind of whiten things up if you want to. Um, or you can use this as kind of a color picker. 
So you could come in here and you could adjust. So you could come in here and you could adjust different colors if you wanted to and then click like the apply button. And so if you click the apply button, you can see how this overrides your materials so that they're all this red color. And obviously you don't necessarily want that. Really what we're doing we're really just overriding this so that you can take a look at your lighting and shadows within your model. So you can see how this gives you a lot better preview of what your lighting is going to look like on the interior of this building. So you can see how now I can get an idea of what my shadows look like by clicking and dragging and you can see how this moves a lot faster. So there's also a couple things you can do to adjust the quality and speed of this render because really what we're doing with this one is we're just testing our lighting and so we don't necessarily need this to create a really large image and honestly I'm not sure how mine got set to this to begin with but there's two things we're gonna change so the first thing to know is if you're doing an interactive render you can't really adjust the quality so like if this is running as an interactive render meaning when I adjust or when I fly my camera around this is adjusting you can't really adjust your quality settings however if you stop this render and you go into your settings in your asset editor if you don't do this as an interactive render you can actually adjust the quality of the render that you're creating so if you go back now and you render this as a non-interactive render, you can see how it's faster, but it also gives you a better quality preview. And it's also a lot less noisy. So you can definitely do that um, to kind of reduce this, to do some like faster renders, you could drag this down to draft quality. Um, or if you're gonna run this as an interactive render, you can also reduce the dimensions in your render output. So if you reduce the dimensions in your render output, like let's say I was running this right here, um, you can see how I had this running at a resolution of 1422 by 800. Well, the larger this image is, the longer it's gonna to take to render. So if you were to come in here and adjust this to something like 800 by 600, or um, this kind of has a locked aspect ratio right now but um, let's say we wanted this as kind of a square, you could do like 800 by 800, something like that. And what that'll do is that'll reduce the size. of this interactive render. So I kind of had to restart it, but you can see how now that's only at 800 by 800 instead of the larger image that I had in here before. And you can adjust that aspect ratio. You can do a lot of different things. And by reducing that size, you can really increase the speed of your preview. So, and then once you're kind of happy with your light settings, you can go back in and you can turn your material override back off. And that'll have this come in here and calculate this um, based on your actual materials that are in here. But leave a comment below. Let me know if this was helpful, if you enjoyed it. I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.